Greetings. Today we're going to check out Long Beach Harbor and we're going to look at Shoreline the Marina and Rainbow Harbor and Shoreline Village. Check out some of the amenities and see what's happening here. This is primarily a cruiser's guide. It's also good if you're just visiting the area and want to check out the waterfront. Well, if we're cruising down the coast of California and we think, hey, why would I want to stop in Long Beach? Well, that's what this video is all about. Yeah, we have a lot of other marinas around the, the region. We have Marina Del Rey and Redondo. Uh, we have the Port of Los Angeles. And there's a number of marinas and services there. Uh, we have, of course, Long Beach and Alamitos, and I'll do Alamitos Bay in a, another subsequent video. We also have Newport. We have San Diego. Well, I mean, there's a lot of places, but this might be one of your stops, and I'll show you why. Of course, one of the bigger draws to this area is we're right near Catalina Island. And if you're, say, cruising down the Channel Islands and such and stop over in Catalina, this can make another stop. And, of course, it's not for everybody. I mean, this is a large metropolitan marina, so we have a lot of city amenities and a lot of city events. But that might be a nice little respite to kind of uh, cruising out in the lonely seas. So one of the big advantages of this uh, harbor is that we're surrounded by a breakwater. So it offers some pretty good storm protection and offers limited mooring and anchoring opportunities out here. Uh, however, the drawback is, hey man, we're one of the largest ports in the world. And there's a lot of shipping traffic and there's a lot of recreational boating here. So it can get really crowded, especially during the summer months. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to talk about Shoreline Marina and Rainbow Harbor and Shoreline Village. I will do a subsequent video on Alamitos Bay, which has, uh, I would kind of consider more of a cruiser's amenities. Uh, this is a funner place, but uh, Alamitos Bay has more for kind of the cruisers and stuff. So here I am on a sped up version of kind of a north-northwest approach, close hauling it in towards Queensgate. Angel's Gate's about a mile and a half north uh, from this location. And of course, you see the Palos Verdes Peninsula mountains and kind of the, the background there. One thing you want to kind of pay attention to is approaching or exiting uh, container ships. Uh, they're big, they're large, they don't stop. And there's not a lot of room to get a couple boats through. And you'll definitely get blasted if you... Uh, are around one of these things as as they're moving nearby you so again keep wary on those those boats there one thing uh kind of about the breakwater and such uh, depending on the swells oftentimes as you're approaching both uh, queens or angels gate what we see is that the seas can get quite confused uh, maybe about a quarter mile or so away from from there also be wary man at high tide or if there's storm surges going on uh, that breakwater isn't very high out of the water. Uh, so again, pay attention to that. You don't want to end up on the rocks. Another option if you're coming in from the south is to come through what we call the Alamitas Channel. There you don't have to worry about, oh, say, any container ships really uh, entering or exiting off that end. There's just recreational boating. It's also a good way to kind of sneak into the harbor via uh, if you're coming in from Avalon on Catalina Island. So after entering Queensgate, we see these large giraffes, uh, these gantry cranes right there. Also, if you enter in through Angel's Gate uh, further north and you're coming down towards the south again, you'll see these cranes uh, kind of marking the beginning of Long Beach Harbor itself. So one of the unique things about Long Beach Harbor are these islands. And these are artificial oil islands that were built to... Uh, house oil derricks and such and one of them called Island White uh, is actually home to uh, mooring and anchorages uh, there's a number of other islands you could actually utilize those too however um, they're a little bit noisy is uh, just because of the construction work that goes on there and the the activity and such so it's a little bit noisier also show you kind of an anchoring location and this is out near the bait barge this is the Island White Mooring Field. It's operated by the Belmont Mooring Company. And I think their current rates are about a buck a foot per day. Um, you can also anchor here. Uh, it's about 20 or 30 feet of, of water. Um, also with moorings, you could stay up to about three months. And it's located about a mile or so away from Shoreline Marina and about a mile and a half away from uh, Alameda Bay. So it's a good central location. 
So there is another option for anchoring, and that's along the outer breakwater, kind of near Alameda Bay, uh, and what we call the bait barge, which is part, usually parked out there. And people can anchor right along the, the breakwater there. It's about 60 feet of water or so. Um, again, not a bad location unless we're having Santa Ana conditions where our winds blow out of the east. Then you want to make sure you have plenty of room if you start swinging around and uh, not hit the breakwater there. Um, they do patrol the area, so you don't want to stay too long, or at least you want to check in with uh, one of the marinas if you do anchor along the breakwater. But hey, man, if you're a transient boater and you're stopping in for the night, you could drop a hook at one of these locations with uh, little issue. Shoreline Marina is one of your more typical Southern California marinas. Uh, its services include things like uh, guest docks and temporary docks and temporary slips and such, marina office and a fuel dock. Uh, there's no shipyard at this marina nor Rainbow Harbor nearby. Uh, the closest one here is over in Alameda Bay. There's another one over in the Port of Los Angeles and I'll address those in subsequent videos and such. But you'll see that they have all the amenities that you need here and it's a great place to stop and cruise around and check out long the city of long beach and shoreline village slip availability at shoreline marina is somewhat variable uh generally monthly rates run between oh say 17 and 20 dollars a foot it's really dependent on the length of your vessel and such uh, i'm not sure what short time stays might actually be um, we also have some guest docks there uh, just outside of the marina proper where you can stay up for three hours or so for free. Also, if you're staying at White's Island and anchoring out there, uh, this would be the place you'd want to check into. So entrance into the marina proper is somewhat straightforward. There's a small break wall in front of the entrance. Uh, you're kind of pointing yourself towards a kind of a blue oil tower uh, that's what that thing is in the picture there also off to your port side will be the Queen Mary uh, it'll be about a quarter mile away or so during uh, nighttime it's uh, pretty straightforward also is marked by both the red and green green light so just kind of aim yourself towards that and then go around to either side and shimmy your way in right through into the marina as you pass the breakwater of the marina entrance of Shoreline Marina, uh, you'll see this building kind of off to the left, uh, port side there. That's the marina office, and you'll start to see this uh, line of uh, our courtesy docks. These are for the pump out stations and such, and you could tie off here. In the event you come in way late at night, yeah, you could tie off right there and then check in with the marina office in the morning. There's also the Coast Guard uh, is also stationed in there. Uh, they have a small office there, and that's manned 24 7. Uh, you could always go in and uh, let them know you're there. Uh, not that you're a panga bringing up uh, friends from down south. So the pump out stations are the pump out stations, and everything's good to go. Uh, if you're looking for accommodations, also at Shoreline, there you definitely need to show liability insurance. Uh, I think it's a million dollars or so. Uh, also, kind of alternative, there is the Shoreline Yacht Club, and if you're a, a yachty and a member of another reciprocal club, uh, you might find accommodations there. Again, a lot of it depends on the size of your boat, and I could say that Shoreline is pretty easily to accommodate boats up to about 50 to 60 feet. After that, it gets a little bit more sketch. There is, for if you are in a, a luxury super yacht, there are moorings available out in the harbor proper so if you are getting a transient slip chances are they'll put you down by the fuel docks uh, they'll also give you a, a fob key so you can use the restrooms and such uh, there they have showers and they also have coin operated laundry so you're all good to go from right there also it starts to be access to uh, downtown long beach and shoreline village so adjacent to Shoreline Marina is Rainbow Harbor, and it's more of kind of where things kind of happen, so to speak. Uh, it's, it's kind of a neat place. There's not so much of accommodations in the sense of uh, slips and such. However, there are a few. There is a guest dock on towards the entrance of it. 
So here we're going to kind of cruise up the LA River and uh, out to Rainbow Harbor. Now, a few things that I haven't really mentioned around here besides oh, Shoreline Village and stuff as a recreational opportunity is within the harbor is some of the world, some world class sailing. Uh, they run the Congressional Cup there. If you're into kiteboarding and windsurfing, there's accommodations there for it. In fact, uh, there's a lot of trials and stuff. Of course, this is going to be all host to the uh, Olympics that are coming up to Los Angeles, where a lot of the sailing venues are going to be here in Long Beach. And in Alameda Bay at Marine Stadium, there's going to be uh, some of the rowing events. I'll address a lot more of those activities in a subsequent video on uh, Alameda Bay because it's kind of hard to talk about uh, Long Beach Harbor without mentioning Alameda Bay. So the approach to Rainbow Harbor is marked by a lighthouse, the Rainbow Lighthouse. Also, there's a restaurant on the other side called Parker's Lighthouse. Um, so basically, you got to thread the needle between the two two lighthouses. There's also a courtesy dock right before the entrance to Rainbow Harbor, and that's often where I suggest uh, uh, you go. There's a pump out station. There's power there. Uh, they allow three hours there. Also, hey, if you're a transitory person, you come in late at night, this is another spot where you can uh, tie up for safe harbor for the evening and such. Also, we see this is the gateway to you know, the Shoreline Village area, and you can hop on a scooter and cruise around, or you can walk around. And let's take a little walking tour. Well, Shoreline Village and Rainbow Harbor are really your tourist destinations in downtown Long Beach. Um, there's a lot of amenities for the tourists. Uh, there's a number of restaurants, uh, bars, uh, there's the Aquarium of the Pacific, there's whale watching, there's boat rentals. You can even go out to the Queen Mary, which is just around the corner. Uh, so it's kind of your one-stop tourist destination. It does get crowded on the weekends and during the summer months and especially on holidays. So uh, if you're not into crowds, this definitely isn't the place to go. There's also slip rentals there uh, for both commercial and uh, private boaters and stuff. And there's some temporary slips that they have there. But uh, those are kind of few and far between. There's a lot of boating events that take place here in Southern California. And oftentimes they're reserved uh, at the Pine Avenue Pier and uh, some of the, the open slips that are available right around uh, Rainbow Harbor here. So as you can see, it's pretty scenic and picturesque, uh, hence why it's a neat little destination. Good cheap date option here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of commercial activity that takes place here. So you could go whale watching or you could go deep sea fishing uh, off the shore there. One of the, the neat little aspects of the, oh, you could also go whale watching. One of the neat little aspects uh, that the city of Long Beach actually has is the Aqualink. And that's a boat taxi that can take you from uh, Rainbow Harbor all the way over to Alameda Bay. And it costs $5, exact change, um, a trip, and also returns. And they, they run from the, the morning until uh, the early evening. So it's kind of a little convenient little thing to get a ride on the uh the aqualink there um there's also the catalina express it's a boat that goes out to catalina a few times a day and comes back uh which is another uh kind of compute commuter experience but also great for tourists and such so uh, a lot of amenities that we do have here and it's really kind of a neat thing to go out and explore there's so much to do out here Of course, hobnobbing about Shoreline Village, you never know who you meet. Uh, but as an interest to mariners, one of the places you might want to check out is near Gladstone's restaurant is the Transpac Walk. And Transpac is a race that takes place from Long Beach to Hawaii every other year. And it kind of honors some of the past winners and uh, event takers and such of this notable race. Of course, it's always neat going down there on Transpac Week uh, to see some of the boats and crews and the buzz in the air. And of course, I, it was kind of neat to see the Mighty Merlot uh, 
at Transpac and stuff. And of course, it set a uh, record of going from Long Beach to Hawaii in four days and seven hours. So if you look at most voyages with non-race boats, might take up to three weeks and such. Uh, this guy kind of buzzed along and made it there really quick. So across from Shoreline Drive and Shoreline Village is the downtown Long Beach area and immediately across is the Pike, which used to be an amusement park. But with the revitalization that's taken place here, now it's a, a tourist area and there's a big outdoor shopping mall. So uh, also Shoreline, famous for the Long Beach Grand Prix. And that's another event that takes place here is that we have the race week that takes place here. And it's another exciting time uh, for downtown Long Beach. So if uh, racing's your thing, good time to come and visit. Um, we also have a number of, uh, you know, if you're looking at Mariner, you're looking for amenities and such. There's some grocery stores here and there's some bars and stuff. The nightlife is just like that of any metro major metropolitan area. However, if you're a long distance cruiser, uh, I recommend more the Alameda Bay area. And when I do a video on that, uh, the shopping experience there is a little bit better. It's a little bit easier and more convenient. There's also a West Marine over at uh, Alameda Bay and there's also a shipyard. So I'll, I'll present that in another video. One of the places I'd like to highlight on this is the Aquarium of the Pacific. Uh, a neat little place to go and see the aquatic life that occurs here in the Southern California region. They also have tropical fish and some other places and such. But uh, the kelp forest, the rock, the uh, jetty that goes out there, the breakwater, uh, a lot of neat little displays there. So we're going to wrap up this video by stopping off at the Shoreline Aquatic Park, a nice little green area. It's home to the Pirate Fest. Uh, they even have concerts and such that go on there. Of course, it's home to the lighthouse that marks the marker for Rainbow Harbor. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, keep an eye out for my Alabeda Spay video, which will have a lot of uh, other pertinent information and more about recreational activities in Long Beach Harbor itself. So you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.